Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is Mark Dempsey with the National Convergence Technology Center. We are based at Collin College north of Dallas. And with me today is Amber Healer. She is the PI of our NSF grant. So we are here at High Tech to talk to you today about common barriers to successfully engaging employers and how to overcome them. I'm going to handle the first few slides, but then Anne, please feel free to jump in if I miss a point in time. All right, so here's the agenda. We'll give a quick overview of our center, talk about the built model, and built here stands for business and industry leadership team. We'll discuss some common implementation, implementation challenges, then finally we'll offer some next steps for you in considering how to implement the built model yourself. Okay, so who are we? The National Convergence Technology Center like I said, it's based at Collin College in North Texas. We are funded by a grant from the National Science Foundation. We started as a regional AT center in 2004. AT, AT stands for Advanced Technological Education. Then we became a national AT center in 2012. We are currently in our renewal grant as a national center. The CTC's mission is to support IT infrastructure and cyber programs across the country by helping align curriculum with workforce needs. All of our work is led by our national business leaders, the group we call the BUILT, we also manage a community practice of educators from 82 colleges across the country to facilitate the sharing of resources and know-how. And we provide for free professional development for IT faculty. Uh, right now, we are in the 20th year, uh, this July of our five-day Summer Working Connections training event. So by the way, this, the CCN, that group I mentioned, the Community Practice of Educators, that group is free to join. So if you'd like your IT program to join, please write to me. My email address is at the end of this presentation, and we'll get you an application for that. I think we all can agree that the major goal of technical programs, not just IT programs, is to make sure students are completing certificates and degrees to get them ready for the workforce. To do this, technical programs need employers who are highly engaged in supporting that effort. So that is where the bill comes in. Think of this business and industry leadership team as a traditional advisory council on steroids. That's what Anne always says. The employers on the built are not passive passengers just going along with the flow with whatever faculty wants to do. They're actively co-leading the college's work. So here's a photo of the last in-person building meeting we had before the pandemic. So we're all together in the room uh, at that meeting. Now the bill can come in all kinds of flavors. The bill could be a local one advising a single college. The bill could be a larger group advising multiple colleges and programs on a regional level. The, the bill could be like ours, a group considering the national picture and advising many programs across the country. Or the bills could be more focused and more micro looking at maybe just a single initiative or project. The point to all this is that to make clear that the built model can work with any technical program at any size college. So that relationship between the educators and the employers where employers are co-leading the program, actively helping shape the content, getting invested in the students, that's a win-win, win-win for everybody. Employers get connected with a pipeline of workforce ready job candidates. Faculty know that they're teaching students the skills the job market needs. Students are first to be considered for internships and for job openings, and programs create a pool of engaged employers willing to support the college's work. Everyone benefits. So there are seven essentials to the built model. We'll go through them one by one, but here's a quick rundown. Assemble single discipline built, rather than asking everyone to be an expert on everything. Convene the built quarterly for regular, frequent engagement. Schedule time during those meetings for what we call a trends talk. Invite faculty to attend so they can hear from the built firsthand. Prioritize once a year a detailed list of necessary entry level job skills. Then you map that built, built to create a job skills list back to curriculum to make sure it aligns. And finally, give regular feedback to the built to be sure they understand how the feedback is being used. Okay, so now we can go through those in more detail here. Divide your built. It can be hard to find an employer who knows a lot about everything. The idea here is to leverage their know how only in their specific areas of expertise. So here's how that might work. Uh, if you meet three times a year, then maybe the super build, we call it, meets in the spring and the summer. That's the whole group, that's everybody. In IT, that would be here, uh, the networking employers, the programming employers, the security employers. These are your more general meetings about industry trends and program updates. But then in the fall, you break that group up for your annual job skills prioritization. Now you have three meetings, so just one big one. Those sub builds will then zero in on just their area of expertise. The networking employers, for example, focus just on networking job skills at their fall meeting. By the way, you hear the term KSAs here as well. That stands for knowledge, skills, and abilities. Okay. Convene quarterly. 
Once or twice a year really is not enough. Avoid the whole out of sight, out of mind issue by meeting frequently. And don't get stuck on in-person meetings. Those are great, but three of our four meetings each year is done via Zoom. And even when we do get together in person, we always have a conference phone in the room for those who want to call in. And again, the way we do it here at the CTC, the three shorter meetings each year look at trends, then the one longer meeting each year looks at updating and prioritizing the KSAs. Discuss trends, we mentioned this already. Be sure you set aside time on your agenda to allow the built members to share their perspectives on the current and the future industry trends. This is a great way to keep educators in the loop on what's happening. That is, everyone gets to better understand what's coming. You can't just talk about industry needs once a year at the KSA meeting. You really need to fill in the gap with these trends talks at the other meetings as well. And invite your faculty. We're always surprised when a program convenes your business council without any faculty in the room. It's essential to allow faculty members to hear firsthand the built member perspectives and recommendations. It's also important to provide a forum for educators to ask the employees questions, employees questions. Conduct the annual vote. This is a big one. We've mentioned it several times now. Once a year, your built will prioritize a detailed list of entry level KSAs. That's knowledge, skills, and abilities. And recently we started adding tasks into the mix as well. What will the new hires need to know? Note here that we ask the bill to look 12 to 36 months into the future. Programs will have trouble making any curriculum changes based on today's workforce needs. The wheels of academia can turn very slowly, especially in comparison to how fast things like IT move. So the bill is asked to look ahead. What will be important not today, but in 12 to 36 months in the future? As for the format, the bill uses a structured, repeatable voting process. KSAs that are essential are ranked fours. KSAs that are not as important are ranked ones. The end result in all this is an actionable spreadsheet with concrete numbers. We believe this is much more useful than relying on just meeting minutes. Just one last point here. In addition to the vote, we ask the bill to discuss the voting results together in the room during the meeting. That is a very valuable part of the whole process. The bill will often decide together to change the wording of a particular KSA, maybe, maybe even add new ones. You and your faculty would definitely want to hear that debate and discussion. Map the KSAs. The built meeting and vote is only the first step. Now the faculty takes the results and compares it to the current curriculum. Is everything the built recommends getting covered in the classroom? That's the question. Any gaps can be addressed by adjusting the curriculum. The goal here is to get the program aligned with the workforce needs. And I'll finally give feedback. This is a big one as well. Make sure you close the loop so the built feels valued. Share how you implemented this, their suggestions. Let them know that you heard them, that you took the recommendations seriously. If they feel ignored, they're going to stop helping you. I mean, if you can't do something they wanna do, let them know, don't ignore it, tell them. Well, sometimes they can help solve a problem. Maybe they can find adjuncts, maybe they can give you some equipment. So always give them feedback to what you're doing, what they said, okay? So that's a brief sort of dive into the seven essentials of the build model. Now, Anne is gonna talk about assembling your build, the logistics of the build, the ideal build, and then also at the end, how to deal with some common implementation challenges, okay? Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it's very important to have the right people on your built. Uh, it is extremely important that these people be active and be subject matter experts in their area. It's usually a good idea to have a few high level technical executives and the word technical is very important in this. They need to actually see the future from a technology viewpoint. It's also important to have first line hiring managers. Those are the people that know what they are needing to hire. And it's important to have them, even though maybe their future focus is not quite as clear as that of the high level technical executive whose responsibility it is to keep a company in business. We also like to have a few technicians and we like those technicians to come from the programs themselves. They then are the bridge between the business people and the academicians. Um, one thing I will point out though, is we do not like to see a company represented only by the HR representative because the HR representative gets their information secondhand from hiring managers. Next slide. So how do you find these built members? Uh, it's network with your network. It's network with the people that you know to get to the people that you need. Uh, it's important for you to come up with a value proposition of why someone would want to work with you on your built team. 
It may be that they wish to have a broader pipeline of people to choose from to hire, or it may even be that the business person wants to actually collaborate with other businesses, perhaps larger companies, and work with them so that they know what's going on in the industry. In any event, here are some ideas for you to seek out the right belt members. Contact your college president and actually ask her or him to contact their board of trustee members. Definitely you do have to ask permission because usually people working at a college are not allowed to approach the board of trustee members on their own, but see who they might know that who are subject matter experts in the area. And even if they don't know subject matter experts, maybe they have connections with the CEOs of companies in the area. And those CEOs may be able to help you find something within their company. Also talk to the chambers of commerce. In our area, we have four chambers of commerce in the North Texas area. And then of course, nationally, there's lots of chambers of commerce to work with. Economic development organizations are also very important. Certainly useful to have that because they're interested in having, um, having economic prosperity for the area that you're in. So get them involved. Also, you can talk to the workforce boards. Sometimes they will have good connections. And then there's always discipline specific professional associations. There's usually an, an IT or cyber a group on every state level. Uh, it's just a little bit difficult to go find that connection, but you can start uh, with the coordinating board for your state or whatever that uh, institution is called. Next slide. Logistics, plan, 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 plan. We have found that 8.30 a.m. works best for us because that allows people to get involved with us before they get distracted with whatever the crisis du jour happens to be. But I will say that depending on your, your particular focus in your area, maybe the people like to come in the evening. I've seen that it works very, very well to start a meeting at five o'clock, maybe five to seven and feed them dinner. That works well in some areas as well. It is important to feed them if you possibly can. And one thing I will say is Coffee seems to be the required drink for these meetings to keep it going. At least have coffee and snacks if you cannot feed them a full dinner. Also use phone calls and snail mail. In other words, actually printed letters to invite people to your meeting. In the pandemic time period, we will also suggest that you always send an email as a backup, but don't use email only. Uh, people receive such little snail mail these days that your letter will stand out if you send it on a printed letter. And then develop the WIFM, the what's in it for me value proposition for the built prospects. Why do they want to help you? Why is it valuable for them to help you? Next slide. Now, managing the voting. KSAs is knowledge, skills, and abilities. And I will also say that nationwide, there is an emphasis on the knowledge and skills and a separate emphasis on employability skills. So you may find that that's how it would work for you. The BILT focuses on KSAs. They do not focus on designing curriculum. Why? Oftentimes, employers think that designing curriculum is pretty easy. And we educators know that it isn't. However, aligning the curriculum with what the businesses want is essential to make the graduates very employable into the future. And again, we focus on entry-level skills 12 to 36 months out because that gives the colleges time enough to implement the changes. We start with a pro forma list that we put together from a variety of sources, not a blank wall, because a blank wall actually will result in a very long and difficult meeting. Uh, what we have is a pro forma list that allows the built to edit, add, delete as they go along. Next slide. The employers rank the skills, as Mark has said, one to four with four most important, and they discuss the results. The ranking is now done electronically, which is great. 
You may have seen the business people raise their hands in a previous picture. We don't do it that way anymore. We ask them to vote, but then we ask them to discuss. That is just as important as the vote. Discuss each of the items that they wish to discuss. And this seems to work very, very well with some in the room, some on the phone, some on Zoom. Consensus is not the goal, but we do want to know the points of view from the various people that actually rank the skills. Next slide. Feedback, very, very important. I remember being on a business advisory council whereby I gave my absolute best advice to what the college needed to do. And then I went back actually a year later only to find that they'd really done none of it. That was kind of debilitating. That eroded my confidence in the process. It's very important for the faculty to meet together to cross-reference the prioritized KSAs and the discussion points to the curriculum to identify gaps and figure out how they would like to address those gaps. The intent is to do everything possible to address what the belt wants, even and if there are some things that you cannot do to actually discuss that with the belt also. The belt members thereby feel heard and feel valued and appreciated. Next slide. The ideal built actually, to summarize, co-leads the program. More input, they co-own the program. And when they co-own the program, that means that they're gonna be very interested in the graduates because it's basically their program. They do identify entry-level KSAs to help steer the curriculum. They do share trends and forecast the labor market demand. We haven't emphasized that too much, but it's really important that there be significant labor market demand out there for whatever the discipline area is that you're focusing upon. They also develop relationships with the colleges that are preparing the future employees. And it, what you really want is for the business people to consider your college graduates first before anybody else when they're trying to fill job openings. And the whole process actually does deliver workforce ready graduates that are ready to hit the ground running. Next slide. Here's kind of a quick comparison. An advisory board may just advise. And you know, as well as I, that advice can be ignored. But if you put them in a co-leadership role and you require an annual KSA vote and it's not a rubber stamp operation, which is what especially some of the funding agencies think advisory councils are. It actually improves the ability for the college to turn out graduates that are gonna be very employable and actually desired by the business people. Next slide. Some challenges, we've heard lots of challenges but you know what? There are a lot of colleges nationally that are implementing the built model for all their technical programs. One challenge could be the reluctance to schedule frequent meetings. Some colleges like to check the box. Maybe the requirement is only one meeting a year. I would offer that if I only see the business people once a year, they're not likely to be terribly involved. It's very important that the meetings be frequent. They don't have to be face-to-face. -face. Virtual meetings work. We've proven that very well during the pandemic. It does take time to build relationships and our sweet spot has been to meet quarterly for the entire duration of our work. Next slide. Reluctance to have an annual vote. Well, I can understand that if we were back to the point of actually counting hands. But the vote now, even for 100 or 150 KSAs, is not likely to take much more than 20 or 25 minutes. Free-flowing discussion is difficult to process and figure out how to align, uh, how to use that for alignment of curriculum. The actual votes are very helpful, plus the actual Discussion after the vote adds to that and makes it a very rich set of information to use for alignment. Next slide. 
Inability to find committed employers. Well, this does take a while to find the right people. Um, it again, network with the network has worked for us. And once the built members really understand that they're heard and that they're making a big difference, they will commit and they will actually help recruit others to join the group. And make sure you think about they're with them. I try to talk with key members of the built at least annually or every 18 months to see what might have changed in their with them and if they have suggestions for changing our process. It's usually a very, very good conversation. And that conversation, in addition to the meetings, keeps them feeling like they are really valued and appreciated. Next slide. Difficulty getting institutional buy-in. Um, what I would say is start small, build the built for one program. And over time, you're gonna see incredible success. That's what's happened with these colleges I'm working with now who are implementing the built for all their technical programs. They started with one program. And once that program produced results, they could see in fact that it was very valuable and they're going after implementing the built for all technical programs. It's also important to have an influencer whether it be a faculty member, a dean, uh, could even be a vice president, could be a president depending on size of the college, but it's important to have an influencer who really thinks that the process is worth it and helps to clear some of the barriers that might be there for implementation. Next slide. Faculty often fear that they're losing control because we're putting the businesses in a co-ownership or co-leadership role. That's really not the case. The businesses are saying what they want to hire in terms of KSAs. They're not designing course content. That's still up to the faculty. Faculty are still 100% responsible for the curriculum. They're just better informed with this process. Next slide. So what can you do? Be sure your built is focused. Don't try to have a built for all of manufacturing or all of IT or all of biotechnology. There are sub-disciplines in each case, and you want to make sure that the people that are on the built actually are true subject matter experts. Do schedule frequent meetings at least three times a year, if not quarterly. Do include faculty in those meetings. During the KSA meetings, primarily the businesses are the ones we want to hear from. However, it's very important for faculty to be able to ask questions and answer questions. Uh, very important to have a trends meeting because we're not exactly fast in addressing changes that are need, needed. We do the annual job skills validation because the needs for our programs are going to not be static. You can't just do it now and say, hey, we're gonna use this job skills validation for the next five years. It's very important to keep them up to date. Important for faculty to cross-reference those skills to curriculum and make adjustments, and very important to provide feedback. Next slide. Here's some resources. We have a uh, webinar that's about 60 minutes. There's also a PDF on how to implement. Uh, there's something on the job skills validation vote, a short webinar. How to set up the voting so that it can be done electronically is extremely important. And uh, that is very well detailed uh, in a PDF, uh, the seven essentials of the built model. We have a small webinar for that or video for that. And then some information about understanding the KSA worksheet. All these resources are available. Plus, Mark and I are available at any time to talk with you about your built, uh, whether it be IT or otherwise. Next slide. Here's how you contact us. Uh, connectedtech.org. Under the business tab, you'll find many of the items that we referred to on the previous page. And then here are our contact emails. Thank you so much for spending your time with us and we hope you enjoy the whole high-tech conference. Bye now. Thank you very much. Bye.